So uh, when BMW Car Club uh, contacted me uh, recently to host this event, the answer was straight away, yes. So this is a 1983 E21 BMW, uh, 316, got 1.8 M10 and I've always wanted a sort of show car with air ride and split rims, nice interior, just the full thing. I've had it six years now so it's quite a long time. I put a lot of money into it and every time I drive it I get like a little leg shake from adrenaline because the cars are so loud and uh, it's just so fun. It's not something you could use every day, but when you do, you just let it all out, foot down, carbs on full track. Best noise ever. My name's Cav, I own the blue E28 M535. My name's Harv and I own the silver M535. A bit of time ago, if we turned up with these cars with a few mods, or the purists would have probably looked at us with a yeah. disapproving look and said, you can go and park in that corner over there. <laughs> and I think they're more welcoming now. And I think what they're understanding is some of these parts you can't get, but the other good thing is a lot of these parts are interchangeable, right? I mean, examples yeah. are we fit seven series brakes onto these cars, yeah. master cylinders from, from these cars. And I like to call it OEM plus. And I think the people now, their attitude when they start to see the, the level of work and detail we put into these cars, I think they can appreciate some of the effort yeah. which, is, which has gone into it. We always get good, positive yeah, comments from that. And I think also as the years have gone on, people mm. have started to appreciate that actually it's difficult to actually keep these cars on the road. So yeah. it's just nice to see a nice, neat, restored example bar, you know, some of the OEM plus mods. Yeah. So yeah, a lot more open-mindedness, yeah. The sense of the BMW Car Club is a sense of community as well. So we can go and look at other people who've done these and they may say, oh, how did you do that? Or mm. where did you get that part from? And, you know, yeah. the, the, nothing beats the face-to-face -face kind of thing in that meet because you can physically go and see how it's done and you can explain to some of these people, oh, I did this and I did this and I did that. And that's how I've learned some of these stuff. But also in return, we can tell others, you know, well, this works on this car, this hasn't worked on this car. And I think that's beauty of being part of a of a community and a, yeah. and a you know and a, and a family and I think the, yeah. the BMW Car Club really kind of brings that brings that together. I've kind of gone off the brand loyalty occasions to try other brands but I've always come back there's just something that attracts me to BMWs in general um, they drive better they've got a great following got a great community mm. um, plus Cav always um, encourages me to mod and spend, yeah. <laughs> spend loads of money that I haven't got which is great. Yeah. But one thing I think is Paramount, and you know, we talk about this. Is these are the ultimate driving machine, and I think the yeah. older ones with none of this jiggery pokery. You know, you've got a limited slip diff. You know, you've got three point five into the engine. You've got dog leg box. It's just you, you and the car. There's no forgiveness, and the the grin <laughs> factor and the soul of that is totally. yeah. is, is, is is flipping brilliant. I yeah. love it. Yeah. yeah. Car is a BMW E39 M5, so it's got Danan uh, front and rear anti roll bars, wheel sign B8. Dampers, Interact Springs, ground control top mounts. The brakes are StopTech front and rear, ST6 front, ST4 rears, BBS LM19, eight and a half front, 10 inch rears. Active Auto Works, air intake at the front. It's got Van Marnen, one of 10 manifolds. And at the moment it's running about 460 brake. The idea you can buy a car that will take five people, brake the 150 mile an hour barrier, no problem at all and still put a smile on my face, loaded up to the hell with kids' rubbish and all the rest of it. E39 M5 is the ultimate driving machine. One old boy come up to me and he asked me, and he goes, how is your car so low? Is it broken? And I went, no, 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 it's, 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 it's on an air ride. My dad had an E21, which is where the love for BMW started. 
afterwards, after the E21 went, he bought an E30, um, and it kind of appealed to me. And then growing up a few years later, my uncle brought a uh, E33255 four-door. And um, at that time, it was like super cool, you know, getting in a BMW, getting an E30. That's where the love actually started from. It takes me back to the late 80s and early 90s when everyone was driving around flossing in their BMs. <laughs> the bug started for me when I was around 15 to 16 years old. I always saw them about on the road and I always said to myself, as soon as I can afford to buy one, I would. I actually brought this to tech to it. Uh, that was my original plan. I don't want to keep it chromey. Um, but once I got it home, went on holiday, came back, looked at it and I thought, oh, I can't do that to a pre-facelift. Um, Chromie, it's best to keep it the way it was. The wheels I went for were the TH Schmitz. Um, I actually saw them on a, on, a, on a VW at the time. A good friend of mine had a set on his Jetta and I thought they looked really nice, really classy wheel. I loved the dish, the way the, the Radnox looks. I went to a classic car show and I've got uh, mixed reviews, to say the least. Um, you know, there's me, I've turned up in my uh, my BMW, sitting on air ride. A lot of the cars were OEM, and they were original. They looked like they just rolled out of the showroom. And there's me turning up in a modified car. A lot of the purists that were walking past were tutting in disapproval. But the younger crowd, all the you know, guys around our age as well, and uh, the feedback and the reaction was good. And uh, it's all been going wrong ever since then. <laughs> Both of us. <laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely. This is Vish. And he drives a Atlantis Touring. Uh, that's quite common, apparently. <laughs> this is Ollie. He drives the Atlantis Touring behind me. But I've got to say, your interior is it's, uh, it's a proper nice place to be. And me being a chef, I think there's many cows have died in there, I tell you. A lot of beef patties. Yeah, there. man, there's a lot of beef patties <laughs> in there. Patties. Yeah, it's good. I was going to say, one thing I would have done is an M3 conversion if I had oh, it's the funds and time allowed it. That's one yeah. thing I would have done. I wouldn't have done too late, but it was still a good engine. Yeah, but it's really good to get the the two of them back together again. Yeah. So I bought the car um, primarily as a daily because a uh, second child was arriving. I thought an estate car would be quite good. Saw this car and I thought, wow, that stands out, that colour pops. So bought the car uh, and it was fantastic, really good. As a family car and estate, you can't beat it. But then modifying bug as usual, uh, went for wheels coilovers um, and I had I bought it with an M3 number plate on it and the, the chance was always one day maybe put an M3 engine in. I've had the car about five years um, and that five years I've only had driven it for about a year. Um, I took it off-road because I wanted to paint it because that's what I do for a living I work in a body shop and um, I think as I started putting the car apart getting it ready to paint I realised ah oh, you know, maybe I could do a few more things to it. So I took the engine out and decided to smooth the engine bay. At the same time, I bought Ollie's engine out of mm. his M3. And um, that then spiraled out. I ended up building the whole engine from top to bottom. Um, and then the retrim happened. And it's just one thing after another, the car sort of just evolved into this. You know, the color and the style that is one off, E36 Touring and Atlantis Metallic. And then I've got the M3 engine in mind, making it possibly, I don't know, maybe one of one in the world, don't know, who knows. Um, but I get a, a lot of love and a lot of people just comment and say, is this really an M3? I say, yeah, yeah have a look, open the bonnet, there it is. It's, um, and they're, they're absolutely gobsmacked. And then we talk about why, why BMW never built uh, an M3 wagon. Yeah, I went to Bimmer Fest this year with um, Coz and we had the car club BMW Car Club of Great Britain flag. We were flying for them, um, and it was good. All the Dutch that, and the Belgians and the, some of the Germans that were there, they just 
come up and they look at it and they've probably never seen anything like it in this colour and, and, and the style and and I think that's one of the joys of having it. It's, it's a one-off. It's a unique colour, yeah. isn't it? Saying that, there's it's two here. <laughs> yeah, come as much. them tastefully I like Dave um, <laughs> I think you just put a lot of stickers on them and call it done yeah, you, you paint this is all done in paint shop pro anyway yeah the eyes didn't they that's it yeah hi I'm Richard Stern O2 register chairman 23 thankless years friend of the mark recognized by BMW Munich and now if I'm not doing enough already technical director to help steer the club in the right direction for the next decade, we hope. Um, over to you, Dave. My name's Dave. This is my 1974 2002. I haven't got a massive um, history with BMW like what Richard has. I'm just an avid lover of, of classic cars, especially BMWs. Uh, I've got this and an E28. Um, and this is my pride and joy at the moment. So a little bit different from Richard. Richard's a bit more sort of stock orientated. Mine's a bit more sort of race orientated, um, but still sticking with the, the classic look. The thing about these cars is standard or modified, they're great fun, and that's the important bit. Fun to drive, fun, really fun to drive. Yeah, fun to improve, without ruining them, without ruining the value. You know, it's all down to personal taste at the end of the day. Um, and uh, yeah, I keep saying it all the time, fun, fun, fun. If they're not, you've got the wrong car. I've owned my Second TII now for 10 years. 10 years? 10 years. When are you going to start modifying? <laughs> <laughs> when I get it running properly. Yeah. Um, 10 years, it was a wreck, had it restored, all new panels, mechanically refreshed. Um, it is modified, it's lowered, uh, different offset on the back, adjustable rear suspension, engines all ported, matched, light and flywheel, etc. Mappable distributor. Um, estimated 150 brake, never been tested, I will get that tested at some stage. Bigger brakes, turbo vented discs on the front, turbo rear drums. Uh, I've got a new diff to go on it this winter, because they always leak. Um, and a stainless steel racing manifold, which are rare for the right hand drive cars. Easy to get for the left hand, but not the right. Um, yeah, and it was all restored in the original Colorado. Orange, all new trim, all new glass, all new rubbers, none of this cheap. Pleased to say values are now creeping up, which makes them worth restoring. Otherwise, there's a point where you'd have to say, is the question whether it's feasible or not. So I've had my car, I must be coming up about four years now. Um, when I bought it, it was just uh, a stock 2002. Standard white, green roof, little 13 inch gold wheels on it. Um, just wasn't really, as pretty as it was, it just wasn't really doing it for me. So. We went through from front to back pretty much. Um, it's been lowered uh, quite considerably. It's full stainless steel, uh, custom manifold again, because of the right hand drive and, and the steering column and, and that in the way. It's still got the, the M10 two litre engine in it, but it's been blown apart, it's been bored, light and skinned. It's got fast road cam, uh, trim 45, make it a little bit more throatier. Um, everything's pretty much been sort of either upgraded or renewed because it's either broke or something that I've altered has had to maybe change something else to, to make it fit. Like the, the arches, they're so big, um, the rear bumper wouldn't fit. So that's actually off a touring model because the, the corners wrap around quite quite substantially on a 2002 on, on the square-like model like this, but on a touring, they're, they're a lot shorter, so it dinks out the arches. 
still things like that sort of standards we went on, along that needed to be done and then when it was done it just needed a little bit more so hence the, the marble rack coming in uh, won't be the first marble car you see definitely won't be the last but i think it just suits this one um you know sort of 70 the idea was to like just come off brands actually in the 70s and, and i think i think it's there I think yeah it's okay takes me back to the 70s that's the idea behind it that, yeah. that's the idea yeah. behind yeah. it if, if you can sort of have flashbacks from the 70s then it, it's worked exactly what i want to achieve but uh, the, the, like I say, the, the youngsters like it because it's like got that sort of little racing car scholarship look about it and the older gentlemen like yourself they like it because of the nostalgia factor <laughs> yeah. oh. I'll let you go. <laughs> I'll let you get away with that one. You can't punch me on camera, can you? <laughs> uh, my name is Joe. I've had my E28 for five years now. Um, it's based on a 535 ISE. Um, my passion has always been BMW, right from a young age. Uh, I was halfway through an apprenticeship at BMW. I saw this come up for sale, and someone suggested to me, why don't I use it as an apprentice project? So it got on from there, really. Um, got it painted, got the Harker wheels fitted on it. Um, I travelled all the way to Germany to get those. And they look really nice on the E28, they really finish it off. Um, I went for a E34 M5 engine. Um, so that's, that ad really adds to it, it's a bit of a wow factor when you open the bonnet and a little tweaks as well, so like carbon air box and a different management. This 38 engine is uh, something I've always admired. Um, the noise that was made, I mean dad, my dad had an E34 M5 and growing up as a kid he just absolutely loved the noise they made. So um, to increase the noise a little bit I fit the carbon air box and a little bit better airflow, so more power as well. My name's Tony, uh, owns E30 TC Bauer for five years, had a full restoration, BMW Car Club member for the last six years. Um, full resto on the car and modifications, so it's got D2 air ride on it, 17 inch bottle top split rims, three piece. Uh, it's got an M20 B27 engine, running Gen B throttle bodies and aftermarket management. I was looking for some wheels whilst restoring the car and I go to a lot of shows and I'm seeing E30s with the same wheel over and over again being repeated and repeated. I wanted something different. The wheels that were on the car were 14 inch bottle tops. So I contacted the company, said could you split them and increase the size as in width and diameter. They said yes, not a problem. Shipped them off, gone for six weeks, come back. And I, I just think it makes the car, and I would never ever change, I would never put another wheel on that car. I just think they suit it. It looks like an OEM wheel. And it just, it just, yeah, it just suits the car. 100% suits the car. Yeah, I've known Tony yeah, for two, two years. Two years, been yeah. first really, we met up a couple of years, uh, a trip over to Holland to Beanfest, um, which really good show. Great bunch of guys from the UK going over there. Seems yeah. to be getting bigger and bigger every it year. Does, yeah, they change venues, um, doesn't they? And I think over there they really appreciate our cars because they're modified, whereas in Europe they are really restricted to what they can do, as in Germany with the TUV thing. The Belgians yeah. can't really do nothing. I mean, the Dutch limited to wheels and exhausts and stuff. So, yeah, yeah it's really, really, and I'll, I would guarantee you, so anyone who wants to go over there would have a great time, a really good yeah. time. Yeah, definitely recommend that. Yeah, one hundred percent. The road trip, brilliant. That's what when it's all you've about. Got Twenty or thirty BMWs banging down a motorway all together. It's something else. Yeah. It's all about the people as well, isn't it? It is, isn't it? That's yeah. what it's all about. And then the show is a bonus, really. Yeah. I mean, going out for a beer and a pizza after the shows, or yeah. having go karting stuff like that. It's 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 good. It's yeah, good.
my name is Raj and I'm the owner of Car Audio Security where COS has uh, uh, hosted the BMW Car Club event today. Uh, the love for BMs in general comes from a, uh, a man who grew up in the 90s uh, wanting an M3, realised it probably wasn't the best thing to have, having to commute from West London into Tottenham Court Road you know, 30 mile commute every day. So I ended up buying a 325i cab um, in, when I was in my early 20s. Modified that highly uh, from respraying to bodywork, M2 kit, uh, interior, engine work, exhaust, the normal kind of stuff you would do, wheels, suspension. Um, had it featured in Performance BMW in 1999, so 20 years ago. Uh, and always have had a passion for BMWs. Uh, on from the 325i, I went into um, E46 M3s, uh, E92 M3s, then progressed into an F82 M4, which I sold last year. Um, we also have here the F80 M3, and then into the uh, M2 Comp. Uh, as for this lovely thing sitting in front of me, always wanted an M3. Um, E30 M3, uh, but always wanted one in Macau Blue, purely because there are lots of lovely E30 M3s out there. Colors are beautiful, but for me, the Macau Blue, uh, being an individual color and a color that was only available on a couple of variants, uh, was the one that I wanted to own. When this came up for sale four and a half years ago, uh, just as the market was starting to pick up, um, it was a car that needed some TLC. We're sitting with an uh, independent dealer down in South London, Croydon Way. He'd had it for 11 months. Uh, he'd had a lot of tire kickers, so it was a little bit uh, arrogant and flippant in, when you spoke to him, a little bit standoffish, and I can understand why, because you know uh, these cars do attract uh, people that sometimes don't necessarily have the money, but tend to know better than everybody else. I went in with a view that uh, I wanted the car, negotiated a price, bought the car, and there was always a roadmap. We knew from the moment I bought the car, the vision was it's going to go on air, it's going to have wheels, I'm going to do the interior, I'm going to do the audio. Um, and that's what we've done. Uh, so we've gone from front to back. Uh, a lot of the engine work, although the engine is standard, a lot of the work has been done by Bird's uh, BMW, who were recommended to me by COS. Um, and Kevin Bird, people that don't know Kevin Bird, has been around since I think the mid 70s. So he knows BMWs through and through. This is not a car that you can take to your local BMW dealer and say, I've got an engine issue, can you look at it? Because the first thing they're gonna do is, where does the computer, where does my laptop plug in, where's the OBD port? It doesn't, so you've gotta be able, you've gotta have an understanding of these old cars and a passion for these old cars to tinker with them. So once the engine work was done, we started on the interior, uh, managed to source, um, some original Evo 2 seats from a chap in Germany, uh, got, some, got a rear bench from a chap in Birmingham, retrimmed the interior, uh, Dan at Lavish retrimmed the interior, uh, airlift uh, management kit on there with 3H uh, suspension setup. Uh, originally I had Rotiform uh, OZTs and last year I changed them over to uh, Rotiform LHRs as they sit now. I prefer this look. I think it looks a little bit more aggress aggressive. The wheels are a little bit more retro looking, sort of a BBS look on the wheels. Um, and to be fair, I think I've more or less finished with the car. Evo 2 front splitter, Evo 2 rear diffuser. Uh, I've got a air intake, a DTM air intake, which uh, needs to be done and just fit fitted to the engine and then finally finish off the manifold and the exhaust. And I think I'm done with this car. Um, I'm not power hungry. Uh, I have other cars in the fleet that give me the power, but for me, it's the fact that I've got the car that I wanted in the color that I wanted, looking the way I wanted it. Appreciate BMW Car Club reaching out. Would I do this event again for them? Of course I would. Uh, it's a great community, a uh, great bunch of guys. They love modifying cars, so it's not about OEM spec. I don't mind. I love cars that are OEM and look cool and look retro. But on the other hand, I also love cars that are modified, that have got that unique uh, touches that you know, the owner has put into them, be it a body kit, be it interior, be it audio, be it wheels, whatever it is. You know, at the end of the day, a car is a statement of 
oneself and why not do it in probably one of the best machines out there in the BMW.